Welcome everyone, I'm Julie Lindsay and this is Global Narratives Collaboration on the Edge. This keynote shares ideas from me and other global educators working on the edge and leading the way with online global collaboration. Let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm an international educator. I worked across five different countries in 15 years, international schools, as an IT director, curriculum coordinator. Uh, China I worked in, Bangladesh, the Middle East, uh, Zambia. I'm now based back in Australia as a global collaboration consultant. I run global collaborative projects for K-12 levels through Flat Connections and I work uh, at the higher education level through Charles Sturt University. This year my book was published, The Global Educator, Leveraging Technology for Teaching and Learning and uh, it's through the International Society of Technology and Education. So many of the uh, people represented in this keynote and the ideas and uh, concepts are found in that book. So just to let you know that that's available. Let me tell you a little story before we start some other ideas here. You know, as an international educator, I worked uh, in the Middle East. I spent five years in Kuwait uh, and Qatar. And my experience in Kuwait was in the early zeros, just after the turn of the century. And I was also there during the Second Gulf War, which of course is another story in itself. But you know, Kuwait is a country with juxtaposition of cultures. We have the uh, Arabic people and we have many expatriate guests uh, resident in that country. The international school I worked in was a national international school in that it had about well, 99% Arabic clientele. And typical of the region in wanting local students to have an international English speaking education. So this school had a non-collaborative working and learning environment, it was very exam focused and um, quite stifling in many ways. Because of no true collaborative working environment uh, being there for me, I had to reach out and make sure I connected beyond the school and beyond the country in order to continue to grow as an educator. So one action I took was to start a Master of Educational Technology Leadership degree through George Washington University, which at that time was totally online, perfect for me of course. I must tell you I remember one subject I completed at the time was called Education Policy, which almost did my heading. You know, there was an Australian, uh, there I was, an Australian teaching the British curriculum in Kuwait in this national international school studying American education policy. Uh, talk about globalisation. But the message here that I'm trying to share with you is that if the immediate learning environment is not conducive to the needs of the learner, then you must take advantage of virtual opportunities, both synchronous and asynchronous. These provide networks and communities to engage with, contribute to and collaborate with. This is where the true global and collaborative learning is vital. I'm Alan, and I work as a technology director at Shanghai American School in Shanghai, China. I've been involved in international education for over 12 years, first in the United States and now abroad. As you can tell, I've been working on my Mandarin since arriving in China nine months ago, and my interest in languages, as well as rich collaboration with colleagues from around the world, has been one of many benefits of working in international education. Hello, my name is Dr. Matt Harris. I really enjoyed my opportunity to work with Julie Lindsay on her Global Educator Project. We got the opportunity to talk about cosmopolitanism. Now, cosmopolitan in Latin actually means global citizen. And that's, that's really what we're trying to strive for with our students these days. The, the notion that we can use technology and education and connections to develop skills and competencies and attitudes in kids where they can work with any person regardless of place, time, language, culture, whatever it is. They really understand how to connect with other people, how to make themselves comfortable within various situations and be truly international. So, you know, it's the advent of Web 2.0 and its impact on teaching and learning in the classroom, middle and high school for me when I was in the classroom, happened in 2006. 
So this is when online global collaborative learning really started to gain traction through the use of these new tools that instantly made learning visible, joined learners together and helped form communities for sharing and co-creation. It's really odd to think that I completed that master's degree at George Washington University without having blogged, without having used a wiki, participated in Twitter, used Skype or Google Docs or many of the other online tools that we do almost take for granted these days. So integrating Web 2.0 collaborative learning into everyday workflow has been the true bridge to online collaborative learning. And more recently, of course, we use social media for learning to connect and collaborate. Hi, my name is Kim Cafino and I'm a globally connected educator. I've been teaching internationally for the last 15 years and for the past 10 years I've been really active in using social media both for myself as a professional and with my students. I've learned quite a bit on how to help me develop my own professional learning through these tools as well as how to help my students demonstrate their understanding through social media and lots of other ways to connect them globally. I work with a lot of global educators. And, you know, what really keeps me awake at night is the power of online, global, connected and collaborative learning and the imperative of leveraging digital learning environments to support global education. How to design for this, how to embed and make global collaboration the norm. You know, what educators are doing already, the impact on learning, how we can learn and make better global experiences. And more importantly, the fact that educators do not need to leave home to become global. I think, you know, we need to get our head around the fact that um, there's only a small percentage of international educators, but everyone can be a global learner and a global educator and experience those wonderful aha moments when you feel the power of global connections and collaboration. I think one of the most important things we can do as educators when it comes to global collaboration is share our stories, as many of us are here in this presentation, thanks to Julie, and encourage others to share stories about the aha moments with global collaboration. Um, I can absolutely point to my biggest aha movement, which was back in 2005, 2006, 2006 uh, when I was in my parents' basement in Kansas, and I had a Skype connection, uh, not only with my friend Miguel down in San Antonio, but with this guy I didn't know, Darren Karpatwa, all the way up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada, and then with Ewan McIntosh across the ocean. We ended up calling that through over the pond and through the fiber. I mean, there was a magical power to, oh my gosh, we're having this, this conversation live that we wouldn't have been having otherwise, and it was very transformative uh, for me and, and I think for others that were involved in it too. So let's go a little deeper here. The development of digital and online learning modes and access to new tools and online networks means the practice of collaboration can take on a whole new persona. The discussion about leading pedagogical change in the context of our digital and online world would perhaps benefit from the infusion of new terms to help align with the goals of global, connected and flat learning. Flat learning is a part of a pedagogical approach enabled by online technologies and has parallels with connected learning but in many ways goes beyond just connecting. It assumes a responsible active learner will be a reliable contributor and collaborator and give to others as well as receive. Student-centred and personalised learning is a natural outcome of flat learning. Flat learning can change the world as we know it, both locally and globally. So what about those terms I was talking about? We're really seeing a shift from pedagogy, which of course is to lead the child, instructional learning, to andragogy, to lead the man, adult, self-directed learning, to hortagogy, which is to lead to find self-determined learning, then, of course, there's pedagogy, where learning is often unstructured, collaborative, and supports knowledge building amongst learners in a community of practice. But there's something missing. My new term is cosmogogy. Bit of a funny word, but it applies to teaching and learning while having a global or a world approach. It puts the learner at the centre of the universe, a node on the network, with the capability of reaching out and connecting to anything and anyone in order to find information, in order to collaborate, and to co-create with anyone, anywhere, anytime. Cosmogogy can be adopted as a pedagogy and as a curriculum approach. What do you think?
Definitely both. As pedagogy, our style and approach to teaching must reflect the world our students are moving into, which is one where they need to be prepared for a new working landscape that includes global communication and collaboration and a better understanding of cultural differences. As a curriculum, global collaboration is so important to me that I redesigned one of my educational technology courses to include global learning opportunities. It's imperative to me that students in this course gain a better understanding of what it means to be a global educator, to explore the pedagogy of collaboration, and learn how to design and manage their own global projects for successful curriculum integration in their future classrooms. I think global collaboration is potentially both a pedagogy and a curriculum. Uh, it certainly can be something that we put inside the curriculum and maybe we require teachers to do or we you know, make a real important point of including it in our curriculum, but uh, as it becomes a pedagogy, it's a lot like other kinds of best practices for teaching, uh, giving students choices, uh, letting students uh, create media and different, you know, having different ways to represent what they know and they understand, using inquiry. Um, you know, these kinds of things can become just a part of how we approach lesson design and the learning process with students. And I Why is a global education important? because students who graduate without an interest in the world's issues become adults who don't show an interest. They don't understand how the world works. They don't listen. They don't want to. They don't care to. The education system needs to change. English and math, they aren't everything. Citizenship and global studies are just as important. Without such an education, and the critical thinking skills that accompany it, basic and senseless talking points repeated endlessly by an irresponsible media can convince people of anything. And nothing, nothing at all can change their minds. My fellow educators, our work has never been more important.